Sound Art is an independent artist initiative. We were started in 2007 by four established Vietnamese artists, boat refugees, who studied abroad and came back and were very alarmed at the lack of space and opportunities and critical dialogue that was happening in this city. So they decided to start Sound Art, which was initially an exhibition room and a reading room, and then it's since grown into an artist in residency program. Um, we also have, you know, lecture program, production grants. So it's it's really bloomed to become quite an interdisciplinary community. We also not only work with our visual artists, but we also work with designers, architects, scientists, historians, anthropologists, and our audiences are similarly growing. Um, in that kind of fashion and it's quite exciting to see this community develop with an interdisciplinary uh, focus of contemporary practice which is what is going on overseas as well. I ended up in Vietnam because I had some really wonderful artists, friends who invited me to come and work with them. That was 2007. At the time I was working in Beijing and China, equally also working for artists in Beijing but I mean I'm a museum trained curator from Australia. I have a history of working with the founders of Sound Art from a long time ago. So that all dovetailed very nicely with my research also as a curator. I'm very interested in contemporary Asian art, that's my broad sort of speciality actually. Um, specifically initially I was interested in China's influence on Vietnam, but in the last four years I'm more interested in Vietnam's relationship to the region of Southeast Asia and particularly thinking about histories of the global south, so colonial histories to do with our relationship with South Asia, Latin America and Africa and there's a particular program called Conscious Realities that we're running at the moment that specifically looks at this. Um, post 75 you'll find that most of the contemporary development in art was in Hanoi, largely because that was where the universities and the money was based and politically that's where most of the engine room for culture was. Then, in the last five years, there's been a really interesting split with a lot more activity in the South. Now, why did that happen? And primarily because you see artists graduating in the schools and there's really little option for them here in Vietnam, sadly. We don't have a museum culture, we don't have that many galleries that cater for really experimental contemporary art forms. I mean, you've got lots of galleries on Dong Khoi on the centre of Saigon or on Hung Bong in Hanoi, but they all cater towards very highly decorative understandings of what art is. In Vietnam, there is a fantastic amount of artistic production that you won't see in the galleries, unfortunately, because there's not that many spaces that will cater for experimental languages, you know, like installation or video or film or performance. So the last five years things have really shifted and primarily because artists are starting to realise well I need to make an income, where can I get my money and they go into advertising, film sectors, photography and all of that as an industry is really centred in the south. So interestingly in the last little while you've seen a lot of Hanoian artists migrate to Saigon. So right now it's a really interesting landscape, we've got a lot of artists from Hue, from Dalat, from Hanoi coming to Saigon and opening up new initiatives, working in collaboration with local Saigonese and the scene is you know, really developing and internationally that's also noted. You've got recent articles in Bloomberg, New York Times that are talking about the competition between these two cities, Hanoi and Saigon and how Saigon is actually increasingly showing its light. Now there's a whole lot of historical reasons for that. You've got Saigon used to be the, the city of the Pearl, city of the Orient or something like that. You know. And you know, the amount of relationships that we've had with foreigners in the South is long, historically speaking, colonial, French, the Americans. So there's a lot of familiarity with foreign influence here, so there's less friction. So the scene internationally now, you've got a lot of artists that are choosing to go overseas to work with different museums. They're getting included in public um, events, festivals. There's a lot of collectors also increasingly coming to Vietnam and buying art. So it's a really exciting moment actually. Um, from my mind as a curator and a writer, it's that potential that I can see that I'm really enjoying working with. Um, 
A popular question I often get asked is, you know, how free is it for an artist to really work in Vietnam today? And in my mind, no society is free. We all have certain restrictions on what we can and can't do. Uh, Vietnam is no different. In Australia, you might find that you can't do something publicly on the street. You've got to have an occupational health and safety hazard license here. Equally, if you want to do something on the street, you have to also have a certain permit. Mind you, in Vietnam, yes, there are certain subjects and certain practices that are, um, that are considered unfavorable. So as a contemporary artist, you just have to know your limits and be strategic and savvy with the message making in your work. If you're wanting to say something completely against the government, then know that you're going to be having problems with that. You have to think about your message, how to say it, where to say it. Should I be discreet about it or should I be bombast? And if you're going to be bombast, be prepared to get a little bit of limelight from the police or something on it. Um, we do have to submit license for any public activity. Uh, more than five people gathered on a premise is requiring a license. And there are, you know, there are certain guidelines with what you, uh, unstated guidelines with what you can, can't say. Um, so for instance, you know, sexuality is a bit of a taboo. Uh, don't go talking about Ho Chi Minh. Um, think twice about engaging ideas of history or anything to do with a political critique of that history. So yes, it's, it is tougher for an artist to be true to their own vision here, but in terms of being an artist, practicing, making work, they have access to incredible artisans on the street um, to be able to help them meld metal or think about crafting a piece of wood in a different way. There's a tremendous amount of skill base uh, at easy fingertip for an artist at a relative cost um, that you could afford. That being said, one of the things I struggle with a lot is that you'll have a lot of ambition from artists today, and it's fantastic to see. But sadly, we don't have a huge amount of support from collectors, or there's, a, there's no government support for contemporary experimental expressions. You know, it's, it's tough. Right. The Hanoi Fine Arts Museum has been a very important institution in the development of thinking what art is in this country and most of the funding indeed has gone to that institution. It is still considered the mothership in many ways for doing a show of any kind of art in the country. In comparison, the Ho Chi Minh City Fine Arts Museum, which you know they're both run by completely different ministries and completely different people and motives. Um, but in comparison, the Ho Chi Minh City Fine Arts Museum has very little funding and any kind of profit that they make from any initiative goes directly back to Hanoi. So that obviously impedes progress of programming or of thinking about you know, with what kind of shows we exhibit. And sadly, in Saigon, you'll find that the ground floor of the museum is given over to hire constantly. So you just pitch a project and if it makes enough money for the museum, sadly, they'll just say yes. So the quality control, in my mind, for Saigon is really thin. Um, and that's a real disappointment for, for me, but I do understand the predicament of the director in that if you've got no money, you can't put on a, a decent program. Whereas in Hanoi, they have better uh, expertise on staff and there's a higher rotation of their permanent displays in Ho Chi Minh. Sadly, in comparison, most of the collection on view has been moulding on the wall for longer than five years at a time. So in terms of what their contribution is to how we think about contemporary art, it's really not contributing, okay. <laughs> in my personal opinion. Uh, I think that there's, it's really the artists that we should be thanking for pushing what is contemporary art in this country. It is the artists that are starting their own spaces, that are putting on their own initiatives, creating their own activities, and that is what is the dynamic part of Vietnam that international museums, galleries and collectors and writers are most interested in. I've worked with some great artists from Hue, from Dalat, from Nha Trang, from Quang Ninh, from really far province uh, areas in Vietnam and a lot of them travel to centres such as Hanoi or Hue or Saigon to study but they have still you know 
strong relationships with their hometowns and it's wonderful.